Hey boys, welcome back. Thanks for joining. I'm in the shop today and I wanted to share with you some uh, tactical blades I've been working on and uh, made from junkyard scrap. So let's get started. Okay boys, in terms of the steel I'm using to make these tactical knives, um, it comes from railroad scrap. And uh, we've all heard about railroad spikes, uh, but railroad spikes in terms of making knives it only has about 0.2 to 0.3 points of carbon. Now you can still make a decent knife out of it, but uh, it's not going to hold an edge as well as uh, some other materials with higher carbon content. What oftentimes gets overlooked is what's called the railroad anchor, the rail anchor. They look like this. They can come in either widths of half inch or three quarters inch. Here's one, you can see the difference. Here's a big three quarter inch thick, and here's a half inch thick. They also can look like this. Okay, so and what are they used for? Well, these anchors fit, are fitted underneath the base of the rail, and they're put on both sides, and they butt up against the wooden cross tie here. And what they do is they prevent the rail from moving uh, when the train comes over longitudinally. And the great thing about these is that they're made from spring steel. And we all know spring steel is a terrific steel for making blades. Okay, so now I'll take you through the process of how I made the blades. Okay, boys, so the first step in making the knives was I had to take these rail anchors and straighten them out. You have to straighten them out at the forge, and what you end up with is a straight bar. And uh, like I said, they're about half inches thick by one inches wide and about 12 inches long. And uh, it takes quite a bit. They're not easy to work. I use the power hammer uh, to bang these out. So the next step after you get this straight is to fuller out the straight bar into a shape like this. So we're taking this piece and we're fullering it out uh, to start to form uh, the basis for the blade. And you can see that uh, you taper this down and it goes, I taper it down to about 3 16 of an inch um, on both sides. And then what you can do is that once you've got it into this, you know, basic shape, you can then begin to lay out, you know, the type of knife you want to create with this. And I can think you can see these marks I put down here, but you can, you can, you know, draw your blade here, draw some holes if you want to drill some holes uh, into the tang, uh, decide that maybe, you know, in terms of the the overall length you might want to cut off a little bit here and to make the cuts here because it's uh, it's only like I said 3 16 to an eighth inch thick or you know somewhere in between there I try to get somewhere in between there um, you could take this and uh, cut it on my cut it on your on a portable bandsaw uh, and it'll cut nicely and So once you've got that done and you've got these holes drilled, then you can go into uh, heat treating. And uh, spring steel heats up to about 1500 degrees. You can quench it in oil and then, um, and then temper it at about 400 degrees for an hour. So once you've got that done, 
you can then begin to uh, you got the basis for your blade and uh, and then it's just a matter of grinding this out all the forge marks out and sanding it now to get this blade to this level I ground it down using starting with with about a 40 grit sandpaper on my belt sander all the way up to 600 grit um, and then of course you've got to sharpen it so this is the first blade I made with uh, with it looks pretty tactical and then uh, I made this uh, larger buoy, buoy sort of a drop point buoy And then finally, this small little Skinner. You know, one of the things, one of the things about trying to get a nice polish, this is not a mirror finish. I mean, it's a shiny finish, but it's not quite a mirror finish. Um, I didn't want to go that far. But if you're working to make them uh, this shiny, uh, <clears throat> you know, when you get into the higher grits of, you know, 220, 320, 400 grit, you know, you begin to see all the imperfections. And so it does take an awful long time to, to a long time to continue to go back in grits and forward in grits until you, until you get that, uh, that beautiful finish and get all those marks out of it. So then the next piece of this uh, that I did is I put these, uh, I made the, uh, out of paracord some of these uh, what's called a snake knot and uh, put those on as a lanyard I think it looks pretty slick and those match uh, the uh, the kydex sheaths that I made for uh, for them so here's an example of the kydex sheath that I made uh, for the small Skinner blade it fits into there nice Nice click, won't come out, and the lanyard certainly matches some of the, uh, you know, the Kydex crisscrosses I put here. The other Kydex press or the other Kydex sheath I made was uh, was this one, and that was for this knife. It slides in. Right now, one of the things is that this knife is fairly straight, and there's hardly anything that uh, grabs and prevents it from sliding out. So, <laughs> I didn't want to make another. Kydex sheet. So what I ended up doing is I ended up drilling a hole here through the Kydex, all the way through the same same through, through the knife, and uh, I put this uh, I put this little plug in. Now I know it's an extra step if the zombies are coming, you'd have to take this out. But see that plug fits in there, right? And this thing won't come out, won't rattle either. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Always, always appreciate hearing your comments. And uh, we'll be back again here soon. Take care. Bye.